Hello everyone, today we are in Sibylia in January, one of the most beautiful cities in Spain. So let's figure out what this city has to offer for you in winter. Sibylia is the largest and capital city of the Spanish province Andalusia. And in this city we will explore a beautiful old town, a royal palace, dive ourselves into its culture, and to kick this all off, we visit maybe one of the most famous squares in the world. Known as Naboo from Star Wars fans and Dawn for Game of Thrones fans. And probably the first thing to do when you are in Sibylia is to visit Plaza de España. The most beautiful square in Sibylia, maybe even the most beautiful square in Spain or what I've seen in my entire life. It was constructed in 1929 for an exhibition that was happening here at that time and the full bridges on each side of the square represent the four kingdoms that Spain had. And then there are some small mosaic parts inside the round hugging of, of the big building. And those small squares with the mosaic parts are 42 provinces that Spain has with some famous structures above it with some famous Spanish people. It's a very magnificent building. I've never seen such a combination of different architecture, cultures blended together here on this square. A great thing about squares is that you can really experience Spanish culture here. It comes alive and people come together. From tourists to locals and this is how you will see that back in Sibylle. One of the great things about Sibylle is that flamenco is born here, it's lived here. You can go to a theatre performances or you can go into a small bar. But you can also find it in the wild. We're here on Plaza de España. One of the performances is done there in the background. We passed Real Alcazar where a performance was going on on the street. Just get some small coins out there, some euros and pay the street artist because it's really lovely to be here with flamenco around you. I need to learn how to do flamenco. I like flamenco, but I can't do it myself. Like this. It's just stupid if I do it. It's just a shame to the culture, but it's really, really nice. I really love it. So passionate, so strong. From Plaza de España, it is time to explore the Barrio de Santa Cruz, which is the former Jewish quarter of Sibyl. The great thing about the old town in Sibyl is just to get lost in these very narrow streets. Every time when you walk around, you come around different squares where there could be either a nice little park or there are restaurants, bars where you can have some tapas. And the sun shines just so beautiful over the roofs of those houses, just slightly into those alleys with the style from the Islamic period combined with the Christian period. It's a great place just to get lost. Inside this area, you will also find Sibyl Cathedral, which you're able to visit by paying 11 euros online for an entrance ticket. Something we didn't do because instead, I would recommend, if you are tight on time and budget, you just can't miss the following place. Another thing what you can do in Sibylia is to visit Real Alcazar, or in other words, the Royal Palace. Also, Real Alcazar has been used in Game of Thrones as settings for dawn. It was built by Castilian Christians on the site of an Abadid Muslim Alcazar, or residential fortress. The fortress was destroyed after the Christian conquest of Sibyl in 1248. The palace is a preeminent example of Mudagar style in the Iberian Peninsula, combining Romanesque, Gothic and Renaissance structural elements. The upper stories of the Alcazar are still occupied by the royal family when they visit Sibyl and are administered by Patrimonio Nacional. The place houses a lot of history and that gets clear in the following room. So this is the old chapter house which nowadays might have a bit of a controversial history because in this right room the journey of Christopher Columbus was planned before he we went to America. But it also gives us a good insight with 
the Holy Virgin that protected the sailors at that time and on the painting on the right hand side you will see Christopher Columbus painted on a cloud because this was painted after he discovered America and they thought because he died that he now belongs to the heavens and then you have the indigenous people on the back also protected by the Holy Maria and then below there are seven boats that shows a good insight of how those ships at that time were made. Also what I didn't know is that America was named after America's Despuchos, which was another great explorer in that time for the Spanish history and America was named after him. Other things you will see in this palace are its tiles, the beautiful rooms, the ambassador's room which is the ancient throne room in the 11th century and was remodeled in the 14th century to become the center room of the palace and its gardens that of course contain some beautiful fruit trees. But what did we think of our visit? So we have been spent in the Ende Real Alcazar the whole day. You can book a skip the line ticket online for 14 euros or for another 6 euros on top you can get the audio guide which is useful. There's a lot of things that are described during the audio guide but it also has a lot of unnecessary details, a lot of descriptive elements about the place and that makes the text very long to listen to. But it gives you more knowledge and insights. But it's a perfect place to visit in Seville. When you visit Real Alcazar, don't forget that you can visit other museums as well for free. Think about House Belver, where you can find a great art collection. Or learn more about the tiles that are produced in Seville by visiting Centro Ceramica Triana. In terms of art, there are also more in your face sculptures. In Sibylia you will also find this sculpture resurrected in 2011 because of a competition that the government sent out to make this place a nicer area. Is it nicer? I'm not 100% sure. It's known as the mushrooms. It's a, the biggest wooden sculpture in the world but when I look up I see iron spaces as well so I'm not sure what is wood, what is iron. It should be now because of this aurora light thing that's going on. If you want to go to the top and have a view, it will cost you 10 euros. During the day, it will cost you 5 euros. I don't think I'm going to pay for that, but I'm more on the side of hate it rather than love it. Yes. Especially if you put those prices into perspective with, for example, to Real Alcazar. It is, however, time again to dive back into civilian culture. We already talked about flamenco, but now it is time to talk about a more controversial historical cultural piece. One thing to visit in Sibylia is Plaza de Torres, the bullfighting arena. Based in Spain, there are only two really bullfighting arenas. One is in Madrid, one is in Sibylia. We are not going to see the bullfighting performance itself because it makes me sad. I don't want to support such a thing, but we're traveling and it's an important historic aspect of the city and we want to understand the history. So we're just going to do a visit inside the arena itself. It will cost you 10 euro to visit the arena. Due to the nature and history about this topic, there will be a separate video about just the history of the sport and the arena. But in the end, even if you aren't into bullfighting, this might be a reason to visit the arena. Whilst I'm walking the same way into the arena as the Matador will do with a church where I can do his last prayer, the audio guide here really romanticizes this thing. It really makes it bigger, gives it like an art, cultural piece, and really makes it much nicer than talking about the animal cruelty that goes beyond this. The arena is a really historic masterpiece, like the creation of this arena, it really looks pretty and impressive, I have to say. So many seat numbers and then the arches and the decor and architecture that they used here, it's pretty impressive. Yes, the architecture of the arena is impressive. And did you know that the arena isn't perfectly round apparently? If you have some time left, you might want to explore the other side of the river. A 
if you have some time left in Siberia, walk to the other side of the river. There you have a street called San Jacinto. My pronunciation is really bad in Spanish, but it's a very nice street with all kinds of restaurants where you can have some food. Ranking wise on Google Maps seems really good and there's an old market as well, which on Sunday doesn't have a lot to offer, but maybe during the week it's a very nice local market as well. We were in Sibyl during New Year's Eve. However, New Year's Eve isn't in Sibyl as you might expect it to be. So if you're here for New Year's Eve, the sail line, there's nothing officially organized, but it seems everyone is gathering around Plaza de Nuevo. And at a stroke of midnight, you should eat 12 grapes, one on every stroke, to have you a prosperous new year. My wishes for 2022 is, 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 as you see in my other video, don't book with Airbnb. But it's not really a wish, I'm just not going to do that. This is more New Year's resolution. My wish is that I will travel a lot and take you around the world again. such a weird random experience to celebrate New Year's Eve in Sibylia. I wouldn't recommend you at all to come to Spain at all to celebrate New Year because it's not in their culture. Their culture is about family tradition, celebrate at home. There's nothing organized by the city so what happens is people gather in front of the square midnight, the light of the tree goes off, you're confused, people congratulate each other apparently thinking okay this is New Year's Eve so now I need to wish you a happy New Year. And then people start to shoot their own fireworks randomly. Some people singing, mainly kids, kids who do that. There was a film crew, the local civilian film crew, I think, who made a footage of it where I think, there's nothing really happening here. It's just weird and strange. A lot of people, a lot of tourists who want to do something, but there's nothing. They're quiet, there's nothing. Oh, and by the way, if you have a fort together with your friends on the lovely Plaza de España to celebrate New Year's Eve, that won't work because that's uh, closed. So in the end, Sibyl, with its mild climate, still reaching 20 degrees Celsius in winter time, it is the perfect place to visit in winter and escape the cold of the north. So let me know in the comments below what you think of this historical Spanish city.